the towel power clock correct time time for the big boss with the hot sauce you see that's me i am the heater with the heater heater being on the record i play the single rotten bop and cheap once again let me say greetings and salutations to the entire population of this here fantastic nation you know my name i'm the heater with the heater the big boss with the big hot sauce and boy do we have a show for you you like paul Lanka? you say you're like dd sharp they're all on it with yours true to the heater but right now to kick it off let's go back to the year 1975 out of detroit it's the fantastic four tops with the Gator Gold Dancers. Step chop chop chop. You realize that this is the seventh hit in a row for the Fabulous Four Tops. It's written by Holland Dozer in Holland, and of course, it is number 19 nationally for the Tops that year. This is just the beginning with yours, true to the key to the big boss of the big hot sauce. We're going to pay tribute to a man that is legendary. His name is Paul Anka. Don't you dare touch that dial. Let it set a while. I shall return with Mr. Paul Anka. It. It's featured in a motion picture called Girls Town. Now that you are back with yours, True to the Gator, it is my pleasure to present to you my friend, Mr. Paul Anka. Gee. My man. Big G. <laughs> How you been? Wonderful, Paul. How are you, pal? I'm sensational. I feel like I've done this with you before. <laughs> I've seen you so much in my lifetime. I swear this is deja vu. My man, let me tell you something. You and I, when you talk about going back, back to Alan Freed in those days, as a matter of fact, I think at the beginning, you were 13, right? 13. I won my first amateur contest. Where was that at? I won it down in Gloucester, Mass, Hampton Beach. Worked around the Ottawa area. Uh, left uh, for a vacation when I was 15, went to L.A. Recorded a song called Blah Wow, The Beast Fontaine. My relatives bought it, nobody else. <laughs> Left home again when I was 17, went to New York, ABC Paramount. Had a crush on a girl called Diana. Nothing paid off. 
In fact, I had another title then, because I was a horny teenager. It's called Look at the Size of Those. <laughs> then I changed the title to Diana. Came to New York, Don Costa, God bless him, the best in the business. He said, kid, I'm gonna work with you and make you into something. Thank God he did, and it started right there in 1957, ABC Paramount. Yeah, you talk about Costa, you talk about Sinatra, and you talk about the early days with Vaughn Monroe. But what do you think Costa did when he was at ABC Paramount for your career, Paul? Well, he certainly taught me a lot. I mean, he uh, he took all of these rough ideas of mine and and just took them to another level. I mean, he, he was my producer, he was my friend, and he taught me how to uh, to become a craftsman in songwriting. I mean, he was the cat responsible. He was really, without a doubt, I think, Paul, ahead of his time. Now, I had said to our audience here, Paul, that we go back to 1958. We're working the Alan Freed Show at the Paramount Theater. And I never asked you this, pal, but you had to be frightened at that time, because that's the first major appearance in New York of Paul Anka. Uh, it was kind of frightening. I mean, you got to imagine that you're here with all your peers. Uh, you're performing in the legendary Paramount. Uh, you know, all of us were not sophisticated as to the business. It was a new business. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because as I look back with you to those days, I, I don't think any of us, especially you, ever thought that here in the 90s that you would be such an international star. I don't, I don't know that you know specifically. As you grow older, you understand the variables that can affect your life and your career. As a kid, did you have a dream of this? I think we all had our dreams. You have to have your dreams. I think what you have is a work ethic, the commitment, the professionalism, and a belief that if you can see it and if you can believe it and you want it bad enough, you got a chance. Did I really know uh, what my place would be in this business today? I don't know, I don't think so. I don't think even today I look beyond the next three to five years, who knows? I mean, my plan is a three to five year plan at this age. Yeah, but how do you explain the tremendous success all of these years with the audience? If you're a human being, ultimately, with your audience, if you're a human with yourself and you're in touch with yourself, and your audience can relate to you ultimately, as a human being first, not just a person of the moment, then you got a good shot of lasting. Mm -hmm. Paul, You've written all of your songs that you've recorded, most of them. Uh, is there a certain formula? Uh, is there a certain way that you uh, you can put your finger on writing it that's going to be a hit? No way. Uh, can I put my finger on how to write a hit song? You can't. If I did, I'd bottle it and zillion. You wrote all of the songs, you published the songs, and you bought the masters. What made you decide to do that? I just felt that at one point, if I was going to be around for a while, that it was important to retain my life, my, my professional life. So as I recorded for ABC Paramount and realized I was going on to different things, I wanted to keep the house intact. So I just decided to buy my publishing, buy my masters, because I felt that if I were going to be in business 20 years later, why compete with myself? Keep it all and uh, take that risk. And uh, if I wasn't around, I'd have something. If I was, I'd have something. You know, Paul, uh, Lloyd Price also did that. Uh, he's one of the few just like you. In the 60s, you really are not recording as much as you did in the 50s, but yet you are writing for other performers. Well, the Beatles, English Invasion, wiped us off radio. All the American acts, You're most right. of them. Yeah. Most of the acts, including the seasons, really were wiped off. 1961, the last song that Paul records on ABC Paramount. So
Schumacher from 1958 to 1961 while he is with ABC Paramount has 11 top 10 records. That's an awful lot. You're talking with my buddy, Paul Anka. That song is number one for four weeks straight in 1958. We're talking with my buddy, Paul Lanka. Paul, we were talking about the Beatles, their contribution to the record industry. What they do is they make rock and roll, pop music, fashionable. It's now accepted by Madison Avenue, accepted by the motion picture world, accepted by the masses, so it helps the entire industry. Granted, meanwhile, wipes out a great portion of the American music, but it helped us. Mm -hmm. Did your career, though, suffer a bit at that time? I was one of the guys, uh, actually, who didn't suffer because I had other things going. I wrote The Longest Day, The Tonight Show theme. I was working internationally. I was actually doing better from 62 on than I was prior to 62. The love affair with France and the song My Way. Well, I got married in France in the early 60s and uh, still married to my dear wife, Anne. And for vacationing in Moujon, her family lives over in France. Uh, start a company in Paris, publishing company, publishing James Brown, a lot of American copyrights. Very, you know, I speak the language, live there, know the terrain. And I'm vacationing and I hear this song, this French rock and roll pop record on the radio. And it was called Comme d'habitude, much different than FS does it later. But I like the melody, the something there. I go to Paris, I pick it up for nothing. Go to Florida, Sinatra's down there doing a Tony Rome film, I think. I think I'm working at the Fountain Blue. We hang out for the first time I really get to know Sinatra. Tells me he's gonna retire, we're gonna blah, 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 we're gonna record. And that turns me on. He says to me, maybe you write me something. I don't wanna give him lonely boy or puppy love. I come back to New York, motivated. Take the song out, I go to the piano, and I change the feel of it. Sit down at the typewriter, which I write at. It's around one o'clock in the morning, and I start. And the first line comes, and now the end is near. And I say, this is for Sinatra, and I finish it that night from 1 to 6 in the morning. Wake my wife up, I'm crying. I sing it to her because I know I got something that's different than I've ever done. Uh, get the demo together, get it to him and uh, Costa who are at Caesar's Palace. Things evolve, blah, blah, blah. The next thing I know I've got a phone to my ear. He's got one to a speaker at a studio and I hear Frank Sinatra doing my way. Big moment in my life. Maybe a big moment in his life. Well, I'll tell you, buddy, it changed. It changed your life big change. I mean, all of a sudden, this kid that wrote adolescence-type songs uh, came of age, you know. It's a, it was a major copyright. I think it still is. Mm -hmm. What does a song like that do for you with your audience? Because they remember Paul Anka as the teenage star. Now you write for Frank Sinatra. What does that do with the audience? Up until then, the audiences are aware of you and they're there and they turn out but it's that type of ingredient that you need that makes that severe difference on a human level where people really wrap into you it's like that big major motion picture that changes Cher's life it's like that big film that changes Sinatra's life uh, that's the equation it takes you over into adulthood and longevity and people really lock on to you the Tonight Show, the theme, many people don't realize that you wrote it. How long does it take you to write a song like that? About an hour. <laughs> That's how long it takes people to have lunch. <laughs> Incredible. Your most successful financially copyrights? I think between uh, My Way, 
Tonight Show theme, Shoulder, Diana, things like that. Out of all of the songs that you've written, you're a favorite. The songs are like your children, and they all have, uh, you love them in different ways. Yeah. What happens to Paul Anka if he doesn't work a day in his life? If I don't work a day in my life, I cry. <laughs> they throw dirt on you. What, are you kidding me? I love to work. <laughs> Paul, what do you want to accomplish now in your life? If I get a hit in the 90s, I'll be the first attraction, music attraction in, in American history to have five consecutive decades to have had a top 50 record. He's keeping me going. I'm shooting for it. I got uh, how many years left to do that in? As long as you want, my buddy. You are just terrific. Hey, you know, I love you, and I just thank you for sharing, my pal. Hey, Gear, let me tell you something. Uh, you have been kind and gracious to an abundance of us. Uh, you know, for those people that don't know, you got a history tree also. Uh, you're a hell of a guy, your energy, your dedication to what you do. You know, for the host of us that turn up for you, uh, it's people like you uh, that have given to us that have really made us feel good. Uh, uh, I know what you've been through in your own travels, and uh, you've beaten it in every way like we all have. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity, and I just only hope that this is, and obviously won't be, you know, God willing, the last time that we'll get to talk and, and tell our story. Paul, thank you very much. Thanks, Keaton. cities that are music meccas. One is Detroit, another one is Philadelphia. And from Philadelphia right now with the Geeter Gold Dancers, the number three song in the nation in 1963, the Orleans and South Street. written by Cal Main and Dave Apple. These are two guys that do tremendous work for Chubby Checker and Bobby Rydell.
crossfire. And guess what? As all good things must come to an end, so must this show. But what can I tell you? My pal, Paul Lanka, when you talk about a man that has the soul, the talent, you talk about one hell of a human being, Paul Lanka. I gotta go. Until next week, this is the Gita. The big boss for the big cops, also on behalf of the young teenagers, the beyond teens, and you out there, the Gita Gold Dancers. Thanks for being a part of it. And remember, at all times, you keep on rocking, because you're gonna find out in life truly, you only rock once. Goodbye, y'all.